Okay, so uh, yeah, my name is Tiffany Conroy, and I work at SoundCloud, and we're hiring. Um, <laughs> I feel obligated to say that because I spent a lot of time, um, I, I spent a lot of time working on presentations um, during work hours, and they are fine with that, just for the record. And uh, yeah, so we're hiring. Um, this is a programming talk. Um, I kind of assume you have some front-end development experience, and that's my whole preamble. What if? <laughs> Instead of changing a style property directly on an element, you could change the de declaration in the style sheet. And instead of using an ID selector, what if it was a class selector and you would affect multiple elements all at once? What if? <laughs> instead of adding and removing class names on an element, which we normally do with jQuery, you could change the existing rules directly. What if? Instead of trying to override styles by adding a new style sheet and setting its inner HTML to a bunch of CSS and then adding that to the document, what if in doing that, instead of doing that, you could just remove the styles entirely? <laughs> what if? Instead of using class names to define a changeable theme and setting the class name on the body, you could enable and disable whole sets of style sheets. What if you could offer a print preview with a toggle button? You can do all of this and more. With the Kassam, oh, yes. uh, the, the CSSOM, <laughs> the CSSOM. I have no idea how to pronounce this. Um, I think it's CSSOM. That's what I say. Um, yeah, so disclaimer, some of the techniques I'm going to show you are kind of a bad idea maybe, but uh, this talk is really about playing around and understanding the choices that you have, uh, so let's have some fun. But first, a quick aside, uh, what is the CSSOM? Okay, so the CSSOM is a name for a whole collection of methods and properties, um, i.e. programming interfaces in the browser. Um, that you already can use in most browsers, plus a few extra ones that are not really implemented everywhere. Um, a few of the things in the so-called CSSOM uh, have been around for a really long time, and you already know them really well. So, for example, the style declaration interface, which you can access on every HTML element via the style attribute. Uh, and this interface you've probably used, and it allows you to set properties uh, it allows you to see what style properties have been set on the element and allows you to set them on the element level. So um, earlier when I showed uh, element.style.width equals something, that's using this. And this is part of CSSOM. You may have also used the uh, get computed style method, which is an extension of the window interface. Normally we don't write window dot, we just assume it's there. And we use it like this. You pass it an element, and you get back the computed style on that element, which is not just the styles that are defined specifically on it, but all the inherited ones. Somewhat more useful, somewhat more complicated. Um, but there's one you might not have seen, and it's the style sheet list interface, um, which is defined as an extension of the DOM interface, and it's called uh, style sheets. And it's a list of all of the style sheets that are in the document um, in some order. The order that's defined in the specification is not exactly what you would expect. I can go into the details later, but I won't, um, ex except in person. Um, anyway, this, so this lists all the style sheets, whether they were included as a link uh, element or as a style element. So here's an example of what I mean. So this is Chrome, and I typed uh, document.stylesheets, and it gave me back the stylesheet list, and I expanded it, and there's three items in this document, um, and they're ordered there, one, uh, 0, 2, 1, 2. There's three of them. And yeah, so you can get at one of them by accessing the 0 with 1, or the first, or whatever. Um, and 
you get back a sheet, a so-called CSS style sheet interface. So let's look at what the CSSOM spec says about this interface. So let me walk you through this. This is, this is the part of the specification and the blue part defines the interface called style sheet, which um, a CSS style sheet is. So, okay, we've got the type. That's the attribute that you would see in HTML that you say, um, what, text slash CSS? Um, then the href, if it's, if it's a link telling you where to find the actual file. The owner node, which I understand to be the DOM element that contains that element, so like the head normally. Uh, then the style parent style sheet. So if you had an import rule, then the style sheet which imported that would be the parent of that style sheet. Then there's a title. And then there's this media list uh, called media. And uh, because media is the plural of medium, obviously. Um, and I'll go into detail into that one, but that's the one that shows like, is it print? Is it screen? What is it? Like what medias are on there? And then there's this thing called disabled. What is that? <laughs> I think that is like kind of intriguing. You can disable style sheets, and it's like an editable attribute. OK. Um, so I saw that, and I thought, if you could enable and you could disable style sheets, then you could like toggle between themes, right? But now you need to be able to tell these things apart, because right now they're just like in the list in whatever order the rules say they're in. Um, so you need to be able to tell them apart. Um, so like maybe this title, I guess? Um, yeah, so it turns out there's this other attribute, uh, this other method called enable style sheets for set, and it takes a title. And if you set, uh, if you uh, run this method, it actually enables all of the style sheets that have this title and disables all of the style sheets that have a different title, which sounds awesome, except that it's really poorly implemented in Chrome. Um, basically, the first time it encounters a title, you know, I'm not going to go into the details, just don't use it yet. Um, <laughs> and um, in fact, the simple act of adding a title into the markup will cause very odd behavior, um, partly because it's not fully correctly supported, um, but also because the way that the style sheets suddenly take precedence in the reverse order that you expect from all the things that you've ever known before is a complete mind fuck. So we can talk about it after, but title is not uh, ready to use the yet. So that's fine. It turns out you can just set disabled true and false directly, um, which means you have to keep track of you know, which style sheet is it that you want to delete and how are you meant to identify which one it is. And you have to like sniff out which is the one you want to enable and disable. So maybe enabling and disabling isn't really super possible yet, but it's pretty interesting. I mean, you can do it um, if you know what sheets you want to disable and enable. I mentioned before there was this uh, attribute called media, and it's a list of all the media types. And it tells you if it's uh, set for screen or print or all. So presumably, presumably, if you were looking for a style sheet that was being applied, you might ignore all the ones that aren't the media that you are currently viewing the page from. And you can append media. You can append a medium such as screen and turn that sheet on for screen. You can also turn it off for screen. Um, if you do this, uh, not all the browsers notice you've done it and don't reapply the style sheets unless you enable and disable them. So this is also a little bit weird, but it's a cool idea. Um, if you did this, you could in theory do this thing, which is have a page and then turn on the preview for print, I, presumably. So back to the style sheet interface definition. Um, a style sheet is a general concept. We don't really think about what other styles, languages might be out there, but uh, there could be some. But So this is a style sheet. There's a more specific interface, which is the CSS style sheet, which you can tell from this line here, that the, the first one in the blue area, a CSS style sheet is a style sheet, so it has all those other attributes, plus it has these additional attributes. So for instance, an owner rule, um, I'm a little bit confused about what that one is, but anyway, <laughs> it's a yeah. Let's skip owner rule. Hmm? Yeah, I thought about that, but then that would be the owner sheet. 
It's the rule and the owner sheet? Yeah, okay, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so it's, if you have an import rule, then the sheet is the owner, parent, and the parent sheet, yeah, and there's an owner rule. So, cool, moving on. Um, <laughs> there's also a list of CSS rules. So that's every single uh, curly braces in your, in your style sheet. Each one of those is going to appear here as a separate rule. Uh, then you can, uh, what's interesting about each one of those uh, rules is you can access a single one and it also has a style declaration interface, just like an element has a style declaration interface and it works the same way, but it's the description of the actual rule set. So you can just edit rules directly, which means we can do this thing by setting the width on the rule itself and so suddenly we've changed what that rule means and it changes what it means for all elements that have that selector text. So back to the CSS style sheet interface definition. We also have these last two, which is insert rule and delete rule. Those also I find really intriguing. I just, I love the idea of like taking CSS and actually changing it instead of just adding to it, which is what we sort of normally do. So uh, what about these two? So um, the way it works is you need to know the index of the rule and that gives you the problem of knowing which of the rules do you want to delete. So luckily every rule has the selector text and you could look at the selector text and you could see um, that the selector text for instance has dot box. Anyway, Kassam. It has like all these crazy and kind of hard to use interfaces <laughs> that are like kind of poorly implemented, but I think they're sort of exciting and any or all of them might be a totally bad idea. So I really think that you should dive into this and form your own opinions. And the document is uh, being written for us and for browser implementers and we should probably look at it and play with it and give some feedback. Um, so, questions and discussion. Yes. Yeah, um, I think I've been working with that um, a long, 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 long time ago that I can't remember actually what I did with that. But it's pretty old, isn't it? Yeah, so he's, he said that he worked with it a really long time ago. It is really old. There's a um, editor's draft, which is like, it was changed a few days ago. And then there's a working draft, which is from 2011. And then all of these um, are meant to be a replacement for something which is, has the very sexy name of Dom Level 2 Style. And it has two separate uh, declara uh, documents, specifications, and this is meant to combine them and put all the CSS stuff in one document. But all of a lot of this stuff already exists in specifications, and only some of it is new. It's just the code that all the backend specs are using to uh, apply the rules. Oh, okay. So apparently all the browsers are using this to actually apply these rules. Um, it them. should be there since um, the web inspector got into Safari or Chrome. Yeah, the title thing is really crazy though. Um, Chrome handles it quite poorly. It, if Basically, if you have, yeah, we can get, I'm not going to talk about it. We can get into details <laughs> later. But maybe it wasn't defined as key as it is. Yeah, and so the idea, um, the actual description of the CSS OM is that it's meant to be bringing all these things into one place and really formally describing things which already exist, plus adding a few other things, as they like to do. Any other questions? Yes? Um, you mentioned twice that most users for this are probably a bad idea, and I was wondering whether you see any kind of legitimate usage. Um, so, I th maintenance so I think that we have um, a lot of established patterns of the way we do things, and um, what I think is useful is to think about, is there an opportunity to use these things and what would the difference be? For instance, you know, if I'm going to load a style sheet only to disable it, that seems sort of inefficient. Um, which is more performant, changing the, the class or changing the rule itself? I don't know. I, I think that, you know, we need to think about, uh, yeah? Yeah, I just remembered what I use it for. Oh, um, you <laughs> never some, use um, it. some profile customization, just like Twitter, where you can select, select about five colors which define your profile, and you apply them to the CSS rules, and they immediately change all over the page. Yeah. And it's extremely useful for that case. So every kind of um, customization 
or if you have an application that goes to design, um, maybe you have an um, uh, application that um, designs your slides and you can um, use the CSS classes for that. Yeah. So custom customizing, customizing themes and the fact that previously it was this and in the future it is that, actually changing the styles directly kind of makes sense. Changing them and then changing them back is kind of tricky. And also creating rules out of thin air isn't possible. You have to create like a placeholder rule and then change the selector text and then change which attributes it has and that seems rather clumsy. There's no like create, a, you, the style sheet has to exist in the DOM in order to attach anything to it or expect the interface to work. Unlike, for instance, you can create a DOM element and it has all the different things that you would expect and then you can just shove it in the DOM when you're done. But you can't create a style sheet and then put it in the DOM. It doesn't exist as a style sheet until you put it in the DOM. Yes? So with the coming of CSS variables, would it be possible to make CSS programmable for this? I uh, haven't dug into that. But if you, um, if you do this, you will find other articles about this. And um, there's an article by Tab Atkins. Is that his name? Yeah, never said it out loud. And um, he talks about CSS OM, Kassam, and variables in the same article. And I was like blowing through it. And I'm not really sure if he puts the two together at all. But um, look into it, I guess. As far as I know, the um, IE8 and IE9 scripts on Google Code, they are backwards, make old IE versions forward compatible with newer CSS declarations. Uh -huh. They use this interface and you can use it in production. Uh, okay. They're really helpful, not 100% the same way in CSS, but it's better. And um, for an Explorer, it seems to work. Once, if you can find the rules that you want to change, the, the style declaration interface seems pretty mature and seems to work fine. It's just, how do you find these things? That's the part that seems expensive to do. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I think that's everything.